what's going on guys? Yesterday, June 10th, Apple had their WWDC 2013 keynote, during which they released their next version of OS X, Mavericks. This is the first version of OS X that doesn't pack some crazy cat name, and despite not being the biggest update in the world, it does pack a lot of really cool underlying technology, as well as a lot better dual display support. So if you guys are like me, I'm sure you're going to want to try out the latest version of OS X on your Hackintosh, but with that said, keep in mind that this is just a developer's preview at this point. This means that there's going to be bugs, there's going to be hiccups, and with that said, I would not recommend installing this as your main partition. If you're going to install this, do it to a backup partition or one that if something goes wrong, it's not a big deal. Also before moving on, please don't ask for a link to this, Google is your friend, I will not supply you with the link. And now before getting into it, you're going to need three things. As you can see right here, I have a Mavericks folder. The first thing you're going to need is an actual copy of Mavericks. Like I said, I will not provide links, just do some research and I'm sure it won't be that hard to find. You're also going to need this zip archive called Essential DP1. These are files that are essential to installing Mavericks. And the only difference between installing Mavericks and installing Mountain Lion is the need to use a slightly tweaked bootloader. You guys will see that in just a minute. And the third thing you're going to need is some kind of installation drive, whether it's a physical hard drive partition or a flash drive, which I personally recommend. You're just going to need something that has about 6 to 8 gigabytes of which you can install OS X from. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. First thing to do is mount the mavericks.dmg. And when that comes up, we're going to right click the actual installer. We're going to show the package contents. Go to contents, shared support, and mount the install esd.dmg. Now here's where you're going to have to show all the hidden files. So there's a very neat little utility for this, of which I also have linked in the description down below. So we're going to show the hidden files. As you can see, now we have a base system.dmg. Go ahead and right click and open, and that will mount as well. And as you can see, the OS X base system has now mounted. Now what we're going to do from here is open up disk utility. And now find your installation drive. As you can see right here, I just have one called UniBeast. You're going to erase it. Make sure that there's nothing on it. And as you can see, it's just not finished. And when it does finish, go ahead and click that Restore tab. And over here on the left, find the base system that we mounted. Drag that into Source. And then drag UniBeast into the destination and click Restore. This should take anywhere from, I'd say, four to five minutes or so. So just let it do its thing, and I'll be right back. We're back, and OS X base system has just finished restoring to the destination drive. So we can go ahead and close that disk utility. And as you can see right now, it also named that USB drive OS X base system. You know, it restored the name as well. So what I recommend doing is coming over here, finding which one it is. Be sure not to confuse the two. As you can see, I can tell because I know my flash drive here is 8 gigabytes, whereas the base system is only 1.23 gigabytes. So I know it's this one. I'm just going to go ahead and name that Mavericks Installer. And that way from here on out, I won't get confused about those. And now it's time to extract this essential dp1.zip. So go ahead and do that. And inside of this folder, we're going to find a bunch of goodies. The first two being the bootloader. These two being kernel extensions that you're going to need. And this is the mock kernel. Of which if you're familiar with this process, this threw me off a little bit. In Mountain Lion, there is a mock kernel right here in this install ESD. Of which is not there, they actually moved it and needed to be extracted from a different file with Pacifist. So if you'd like to go ahead and do that manually yourself, feel free to do so. But the folks over at Insanely Mac did that for us and have provided it right here. So we're going to go ahead and close out of some of these windows to try to make life a little bit easier. And now I'm simply just going to open up the Mavericks installer. So I'm working with two windows instead of a thousand. And the first thing I'm going to do is copy over this mock kernel. And now we're going to navigate to System, Library, Extensions. And we're going to copy Null CPU Power Management and Fake SMC over to here. And now we have one last thing to do before we install the bootloader. You're going to want to open up the OS X install ESD, copy this packages folder, go to the root of your installer, and open up system, installation, and here you'll see a little packages alias. Go ahead and delete that. Empty your trash to be sure. And now paste that packages folder here. As you can see, this file is about 4.5 gigabytes, so this may take a few minutes depending on the speed of your flash drive. A couple minutes later, that packages folder has finished copying, and now we have one last thing to do. So we're going to go ahead and close out of all these crazy folders and directories, and we're going to install Chameleon. This is what's going to let us boot into the flash drive. So we're going to you know, agree. Now, do not click install here, because as you can see here, it wants to install to the solid state drive, and that's not what we want. What we wanted to install to is the Mavericks installer. So go ahead and hit continue. You really shouldn't have to go into customize or do any of that stuff, so just simply go ahead and install. 
and Chameleon has finished installing and as you can see they put a boot file right here this is what we have to overwrite this is the one that's going to be compatible with Mavericks one last thing I almost forgot to mention if you notice this Mavericks installer drive does not have an extra folder we're definitely going to need that if we want to get anywhere with this installation so because the one that you have on your SSD or whatever main drive you have now is you know compatible we're simply just going to copy and paste that to the root of the installer here we are booting up the computer to get into the installer and what you want to do here is either go into your boot options or configure your BIOS to boot from that installer media probably a flash drive that we just created if it's a hard drive then of course you want to boot from that appropriate drive once you see the bootloader you'll likely need to boot with the dash x dash f and dash v kernel flags keep in mind that your system could not only look a bit different than mine but also may require different kernel flags the reason we boot with dash v is to let us see exactly what the system is doing. If your system freezes or panics, it'll tell you what the problem is so that you can attempt to fix it or just work around it. If all goes well, you should be greeted with the installer screen. From here, continue on like any other installation, going into disk utility to set up your drive as an OS extended journal partition if needed. And once your drive is ready to be installed to, let it do its thing. After the installation has completed, simply restart the computer, and this time, boot back into your existing Mountain Lion installation. Now that we've installed Mavericks to our partition that we have right here, what we now have to do is copy over two kernel extensions, being fake SMC and null CPU power management, from the actual installer to the Mavericks directory. This can be done right from terminal, but it's just less typing this way, so that's why I booted into my actual installation here. So what I'm going to do here is go into my Mavericks installer, and we're going to navigate to System, Library, Extensions, and we're going to find Fake SMC and Null CPU Power Management, and we're going to copy them to the same directory on the Mavericks partition, which is System, Library, Extensions. Now I'm going to install Chameleon to this drive as well. So I'm going to go ahead and into my Mavericks folder here which by the way is misspelled. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and install Chameleon the same way as we did to the actual installer drive. So we're gonna click on continue, continue, agree, change the install location, do not forget to do that. And of course I have my Mavericks drive right here. We're gonna continue, install. And while that's installing, I'm gonna come over here and copy this boot file, close. We're gonna open up Mavericks right here. And now we're gonna replace that file. And now we're gonna go ahead and try to boot into Mavericks. You won't need to boot into the installation drive this time as we've installed the bootloader to the actual Mavericks partition. What you'll wanna do instead is boot from the drive that contains the Mavericks installation. I had to boot with the same kernel flags as before, which won't yield a fully functional system at this point, but keep in mind that every system is different and an updated bootloader will be released very shortly. Once the machine boots up, continue with the setup and before you know it, you'll be at the Mavericks desktop. As mentioned earlier, this isn't a fully functional setup at this point, so don't expect to test all the new features right away. There's plenty of testing that still needs to be done. A weird SM BIOS and no graphics acceleration aside, Mavericks is up and running. Stay tuned to Roach Technology and my Twitter feed for any updates. I hope you found this guide helpful, but it's very important to realize that since everybody's hardware configuration is different, it's impossible to get a completely comprehensive guide on Mavericks. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out Roach Technology. Good luck, and I hope to see you guys very soon.